Hello everybody, my name is Retrolyzer and welcome back to, well, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, where, well, let's just go and let the date fall in, February 24th, 3.12pm. Okay, that's actually quite close to what I've got here because it's right now 4.12pm at the moment, but hey, let's continue. Sorry for what? Oh, right. Ah yes, this is her very uh, damaging confession that, uh, well, forged evidence. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Yes, even I haven't heard of them, Phoenix. Well, shit happened. Uh-huh. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. And what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. Oh boy! Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. He died. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I did. Oh well, let's talk about this shit then. It happened two years ago, it was right about this time of the year too, oh joy. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. Most likely telling you to come over here so that he can go and use you as a hostage, blah blah blah. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Aha. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage, but before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. And then... I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. And you saw... You saw a man standing over another man with a knife raised up high, ready to strike down and extinguish the spark of life that keeps one alive. You were only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... why she made up the crime. What? Hmm. The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Well, obviously, five people died or something. I think it was five people. How many names were there in that, um, f case file? Here we are. Right. How many, uh, victims? Six. Six. My apologies, not five. Six. Next. Yes. But I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumours about Mr. Edgeworth. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. Hmm. Intriguing. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold like she is today. True that. Oh well. And what's this about a permanent picture, I ask? Yes, what did you see in that instant? Ah! Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. I see. That is a most intriguing um, problem. Well, it's not really a problem, it's in memory. Apparently you passed out. You then woke up in your sister's arms. Yes. You've been through so much. I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago, you must have been 14. Traumatized to death. Pleasant. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies, and find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. Fair point. Oh well. 
there's still something that bothers me about that crime? Really? What's puzzling you, Phoenix? There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. And what would that be? You said you were in Lana's office at that time. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, there's no mystery there. Do tell. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Oh? Yes, of course. This happened at the police department. Right. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. Because the detective's offices in the questioning room are right across from the elevator. But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor, just like that. Without any legal experience, it seems. Intriguing and a half. Well, let's roll. We have shit to do. Specifically, chatting to Lana about all this nonsense. Welcome to the visitor's room. Hi there! Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Yes, yes you do! Evil woman. Criminals don't mind playing foul, why should we? Because you're supposed to be representing the side of truth and justice and the law. Remember, we're here to make sure that no miscarriages of justice are created, and yet falsifying evidence may cause one. Oh well. Yes, it is unusual, isn't it? Talk to me. What's this about the choice of jobs? Oh yes. The fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen, I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. Oh dear. Nope, it wasn't a fair one. I believed in you. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is that at 5.15 there was no murder at the police department. Eh. Come on. This is under the pretense... No, she def... She's innocent. <laughs> oh? Don't you see? I'm here to defend her, therefore I'm always going to have to be on the logical premise that she is. Ooh, nice. Look at that. Chief Gant, yes, when he was the vice head of criminal affairs, but he still worked the cases. Oh, really? They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Nice. Yes, what happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, of course. Of course, she was in law school with Mia Fey. She did, she did have legal experience. Duh. Regardless, Gant's help in the SL9 case was critical in its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Intriguing. And a half. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Naturally, I assume, yes. And the same investigations, they even had the same office. Intriguing. We led a team of the best detectives, consisting of... Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. Intriguing. <coughs> Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence, but that was when the mur last murder took place. And then, of course, killed Prosecutor Marshall. I see. <laughs> what? Excuse me? What's this? Detective Gant and Prosecutor Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages when Dark must have panicked. He waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, then fled. From there he ran straight to the office shared by Detective Gant and myself. And that's where he found Emma. 
And you were the first person to run to the scene, then how come you're not dead? I was filing some papers while Gant and Marsha were questioning Dark, okay. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall stuck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. You panicked, okay. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Oh, diddums. Oh well. Shit can get tough. After that, you placed him under immediate arrest. Huh. I don't buy it. Hello? What's this? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident just by chance. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Ah. Could this be a hint at what's to come? Maybe someone on the investigation caused this murder of Detective Goodman. Huh. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Ah, oh, everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. Intriguing. Emma was assaulted by Dark, yes. The office of Mr. Gant now occupies by himself, the Chief's office. Intriguing. Well, with that done and dusted, let's move swiftly onwards. I guess uh, Criminal Affairs would be the best place to drop off to. And I'm assuming nobody's here. Nope, he ain't here. Things seem quite kind of quiet around here. Yes, you're right. The head of the department seems the same, though. Yes, there's not really any other alternative. Let's roll. What do we have? Police department entrance. I wonder who we'll meet, if anybody. Oh, hi there. Howdy, Sheriff. I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Who the fuck's Billy? Say, yeah, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. <coughs> oh. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today. Oh, well, diddums, I guess. Why did you do it? Well. Ah, fair enough, because... Yeah, stuff. Yes, please do tell us what happened. And sadly, no steak lunch. I haven't met Angel yet. Tell me about it. <coughs> Something that was fishy? Tell us more. It wasn't just me, all the other detectives thought so. Oh, really? For example, the murder weapon. <coughs> tell us more. What's this about the murder weapon? That was Joe Dark's, all right, yes, but in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. And what was it? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. Hello? It means that there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. Well, naturally. Oh, really? I think we have ourselves a problem. It seems that there has been... Well, in fact, it seems that out of all of the shit that was done, Marshall's death is the one that's going to be falsified. I see. It was our first case together. Delightful. Yeah, how old was um, Neil, by the way? 27. How old are you, mate? 27. 27. Okay. Age deceased. Nice. 27. 33. Six years older. Fair enough. Oh yes, he means that stupid trophy. Yep, that's an honour for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close. Well, duh. He risked his whole bloody career just to go and find out if everything that was done was true, and it seems that everything's fucking unravelling now. 
Ah, uh, yes. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Ah, yes. Oh, well. Let's find out more. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Yes, Goodman kept his job, Angel was fired, and you ended up becoming a patrolman again. How delightful. Well, Goodman, he didn't do shit. Oh, well. They? Who are they talking about? Well, isn't it ob obvious? It was Lana and Gant. Intriguing. <laughs> and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. Yes. <laughs> and of course, Damon Gant, Chief of Police. She's never been the same. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Emma said something like that too. True that. Well, is it, isn't it obvious? Shit happened. I never found out. Yes, there is a secret. And it all revolves around what happened there. That's my story. Did you enjoy it? Yes, thank you. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. Yes. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Well, okay, out of all the people, you picked Gant? Fair enough. Oh, that is a fair point. Take care, sir. Right, well, with him done and dusted, let's move on. Uh, I have no idea where I'm going, so back to the Criminal Affairs Department, I guess. I don't know where I'm going. And it's always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That's nice. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Ah, thanks. That's great. And the chief prosecutor saying she, what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media in tomorrow's trial, there's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas. Ha. Huh. Fair enough. Just head across the hall to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Wait, what? Really? Hey, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. Fair enough. What are we watting for? Nice. You missed out an eye on that one. Oh, well. Let's roll. To the chief's office. To the comic book store. Yeah, Chief's office, and what a nice, lovely-looking organ. Meanwhile, there's... Oh, look at that picture. You're in the Chief's office. You're also in a place that has two desks. You used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. Little Miss Bach. Oh, fair enough. Oh, yeah, Johann Sebastian Bach. His, um... To Carter and Fugue in D... Ma That was awful. Never do that again. Uh-oh. Hi there! Hello there, sir. He put that paper he was reading in his deck. What? He was just sat there? And no, I have not been swimming for years. I've had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative... Provocative statement. <laughs> yes, that. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. See that big picture on the wall over there? Yes. Oh, look at that. It's Marshall. That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and I. And look, there's that jar from last time in the background. Nice. It's that fucking jar. I still need to find those final pieces for it. And I think I know what you're talking about, Phoenix. Have you noticed that there's a sword? as part of that, um, precious sta- um, the, the, the trophy. Now what? Is he gonna say something? 
Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. Oh, yes, of course, he's... Yes, I remember. He had the voice of Nigel Thornbury. Although after watching, um, what was it, uh, Ace, Ace Idiot and, um, what was the other one? Cardboard Lawyer's Abridged Attorney, he also has the voice of a Mexican paedophile, but hey. Who won sexy times? Nah, I'm joking. There's no need to investigate it anymore, hombre. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get so f butt fucked for that. <laughs> Who won sexy times? Nah, I'm joking. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Well, that was, uh, intriguing. Oh, well. Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. Fair enough. Now we just need to find a way inside, but sadly, I have no idea where to go. So back to criminal affairs! Again, for the third time. Hey pal. Oh, hi there, Gumshoe. How are you doing? Just taking a breather. My feet hurt. Oh, fair enough. How You don't get hurt feet from sitting in a meeting. You get an uncomfortable backside. You had to serve everyone coffee. Oh, joy. Have either of you seen Edgeworth? No, actually. Oh, well. He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. Okay. This is bad. Is it because of what my sister said? Most likely. Yep, thought as much. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Well, he didn't do shit. <sighs> oh, well. Let's chat about the crisis. Yes, but why would he be blamed? Lana Sky's the guilty party here. And we just hurt Emma's feelings. Oh well. Not only that... But as you know, there have been a lot of rumours going around about him. Why is he talking? Those who don't like him haven't been able to do anything because of his amazing talent as a prosecutor. But now, with this... Yes, apparently people hate him because he's good at his job. But he's young. There's no better recipe I know for making enemies. What, being young and awesome? Eh, <laughs> fair enough. Let's go out for lunch sometime. My treat. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, dick? It seems you don't have any problem with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. I think I am too. Uh-oh. Crack? Oh, come on! The guy's like a fucking ice cube. He'll be fine. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. Oh, really? Tell me more. The only evidence left behind was during his final attack. That's true. He buried... He buried the rest, I assume, otherwise they wouldn't have found any. Well, not buried per se, as in literally, but if there's no evidence, then it must have been concealed somehow by him. Otherwise, it would have been a fucking field day. When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl... Yes, it seems. Oh well. When he left the mo that's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Uh, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here. Okay, his powers of recollection never fail to impress. Yeah, maybe we should. Even though I think that's fucking irrelevant. But let's talk about Dark's crimes first. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. Okay. One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car, so he ran them over. Okay, that's an accident. He's going to go to prison for manslaughter, or danger death by dangerous driving. Okay. He killed a man that witnessed the accident, and then he killed a lady who saw the second murder, and then a kid walked by, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came up upon the scene and killed him as well. Finally, he turned himself in. I wouldn't say careless, I think he just panicked. All conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. What? How do you not have evidence? Can't you... What? What? 
How is there no evidence? There would have been plenty of forensic evidence to at least connect the first victim to the car. You know, like hood ornaments getting embedded in it in the bastard's stomach or something. Eh. I don't know. Oh well. There's um, a knife. Let's show him this. Hey, don't tell me that. Yes, it has a tag attached with the able with the able the label. Yep, this is it. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. Wouldn't happen to be, uh... It disappeared. Yes, it did. And was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. What? Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. What was it? Great. Cool. But what is it? Ah, oh, fuck. Tell me more about this. Tell me more about the murder weapon. Now. This knife, it was Joe Dark's. Well, bleh. We traced it back to the store he bought it at and it had fingerprints on it too. Okay. On, on it too. Bleh. But no one witnessed him using it to murder anyone. When you take a good look at the knife, it's broken. The tip's broken off. You don't have to take a good look to notice that shit. Well, well anyway. Okay, I'm assuming the tip... The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. So, what? It broke off? Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. So... The blade tip snapped off into his own chest? I don't believe that for a second. It's made out of metal. Oh, well, I'm, maybe there is a way it could have happened, but I still have my doubts. Oh, well. Can I ask you one more thing? Can we go inside the Chief's office? But it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Okay. <coughs> but we'd like to have a look around, if that's okay. <coughs> well, any detective's ID card can unlock that door. What, really? Whoa. But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. And you'd get your shit wrecked. Yeah, you'd be fired. You'd become a new McDonald's guy. Ding, fries are done. Wait, isn't that Burger King? Ding, fries are done. I gotta run. Yeah, we know. Everybody likes Peter Griffin. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Curses! That ID card is now useless. Oh, well. I wonder if there's anything we could show him that would make him change his mind. Well, I don't know what we could do, so let's explore somewhere else. To the comic book store. Just kidding. Where should we go? Prosecutor's office, I guess. There's no other place to go. Ooh, hello. February 24th. Prosecutor's office underground parking. No one's here today, not even Ms. Starr. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. Fair enough. Yeah, no one was murdered. Well, yeah, uh, uh, yes. No. No. There must have been a murder in there. Goodman must have died in that room. Just not at the time people believe it happened. Nothing seems to be here. So, let's go upstairs. To the prosecutor's office. February 24th, High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. If he's back yet. There he is, it looks like he's writing something. What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Oh, look. Tough day in court. Well, no shit. And now look what's happened. I'm rooting for you. Well, that's grand, I guess. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Delightful. Let's see what this paper was first. I wonder what he was writing before. Let's take a look. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. 
Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! Hold on, first let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. Letter of r r r resignation If you can't read, I'll read it for you. It says, Letter of Resignation. Well, isn't it obvious? I'm tired, Mr. Wright. I feel as if something inside me has died. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. Oh, really? I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Oh, wow. That sounds really, really, really deep. Yes, this letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Oh, I don't know. Trying to cheer up uh, Edgeworth, perhaps? Let's chat now. Welcome to the Forged Evidence Allegations. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, so... Nah. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The department's error is my error. My responsibility is the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. It's hardly an excuse. You take pride in your work, so tell me why. Why has it all come to this? Oh, well. Don't be afraid. We'll be fine. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Well, duh! Let's see if he doesn't get fired first. It seems all you do, do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. Tomorrow's the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. Well, what the hell's that? That list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case, because he was sort of dead. I see. I'd use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. Hey, you did that! That picture? Something seemed strange about it. Ah yes, there was something odd about it. That bloody trophy. Look, it's still lying there on your sofa. The day Detective Goodman was murdered, you were participating in a ceremony. I had to attend that one. For what possible reason? Oh yes, that piece of shit. Well, they can. They can have it, um, you know, someone take it on their behalf. Like Gumshoe, perhaps. Oh well. Clerical bullshit. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. That screwdriver. Oh yes, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that piece of shit. It was a piece of evidence in a clo yes, close case half a year ago. Eh. Oh well. And then of course... Yeah. Forgive me, but, uh, well. Let me just show you this. There's a problem with it. It wouldn't hurt if you put this up somewhere, like on a shelf. That has no meaning for me anymore. Well, he is going to resign. What good is it to dwell on the past? That kind of makes me mad. Really? Something's been troubling me about this shield. Look, do you notice anything different? I do. I've noticed it for years. I guess I'd better present this other shield. Ugh, really? Fine. Whoops, wrong one. Here we go. This picture was hanging on the wall. And it shows a sword. Prosecutor Neil Marshall, he had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Yes, the fact that there is a sword. It's my sword for you, Daddy. Christ. Well, duh, look! It's a sword. That was the official prosecutor trophy used until that time. There's a story behind it. Oh, do tell! I love stories! It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Oh, really? Do tell more. I'm intrigued. You must tell me more about this. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. 
In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. That's a fucking sword. And sadly, no. Eh. Very well. Here's the story. Oh, great, we get co um, cross-examination music. Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon, which of course is an obvious contradiction. Objection! Very perceptive, but then again, you've heard this story before. Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. Ah yes, when the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless, and thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Nice. The chip shield and the broken knife symbolize... They symbolize the merchant's items and how they were useless in the end. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion, even if it results in something as ugly as this. That is certainly a really good story. Yes, why be the only one given a shield and not just... You'll have to ask the chief. Fair enough, you had the halberd part of the award abolished. Okay. Fair enough. And now we move on, I assume, to somewhere else. Preferably somewhere that can help. Oh boy, back to the parking lots. Excuse me? Oh, hi there, Angel. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Me! I'll have that. Damn right I will have that. Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. What? <laughs> what? I don't even. <sighs> Never mind. Oh well. Aren't you forgetting something? Well, I don't remember. You know that little scene I happened to witness? Oh yes, of course. Alleged to have stabbed Mr. Goodman. It won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savoured when eaten. I know. Delicious. Oh well, more talking, I guess. To the dark investigation. That's a name I'll not soon forget. Yes, because he wrecked six people's shit with a knife. We trailed him for half a year? Fair enough. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. I wasn't too I'm not too keen on condiments. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. Ah, yes, because his brother died. A lot. Oh well. Something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Aha. Oh well. Lana Sky. Ah. Really? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course, they were led by that legendary duo. Yes, Lana and Gant. Gant and Lana. And then, of course, afterwards, they all got fired. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we're so shocked over how it turned out. Ah, yes. Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear while other items were kept secret. Oh, really? I'm proof enough of what happened. Because she did end up losing her job. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Ah, yes. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Well, yeah. How do you just magically become chief prosecutor? Hello? That's my take on the matter. That's exactly what uh, Marshall thinks as well. So, Damon Gant is uh, our target, I assume. Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Two years ago, Gant was chief detective. No, he was vice head of criminal affairs. <sighs> yes, they did. 
Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Intriguing. No one dared confront him, though. I see. Great, everything's forged evidence in this fucking town. <sighs> Everybody wanted to be Lana. Really? I thought they would they would have wanted to be Gant. Oh well. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Ah. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Hmm. I'll never be able to forgive her. Well, because shit happened, okay? We'll find out soon enough. Being used. Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, did she not? Yes, thanks to Chief. Chief. Air quotes, ladies and gentlemen. Oh well. His, yes. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office? Thought as much. I see. If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. Wait, so... What? Huh. <sighs> Hmm. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. I think you're saying that shit went down during the SL9 case, which resulted in Gant being able to blackmail Lana Sky, and then of course she transferred unwillingly, and then became... Yeah, this is just... This is diabolical. Good luck fucking proving this shit, though. To the police department! I don't even know if I'm going to the right place, for Christ's sake. To criminal affairs. I hope Gumshoe's still here. And he needs to see this letter of resignation. Aha! Hello! I gotta make 150 copies. A DJ? A disc jockey? What? Oh, desk jockey, not disc. Fair enough. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer is still no. I'm not letting you into the chief's office. <sighs> well, I can uh, find out. Watch this. Watch this. I'll make his mind change within a few seconds. Three. Wait a minute. Let's start. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Five seconds. Approximately. Is he ever not serious? Oh well. Never mind. There's very little that can be done about it now. Oh really? But now I know different. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence, and but we just we just fucked him up. Delightful. Hmm. That's it. I've made up my mind. I'm going to get fired. with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. He's gonna get fired too. Fair enough. Let's do this shit. Moving on! Let's roll. Whoops, not present. To the Chief's office. Hello. Um, everything's been switched off. Here goes. Hello. Hey! Look at all this! It's, uh... Open sesame seed buns. Oh, yes. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Oh, joy. Emma, why did you have to slap him again? Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. Again? Yeah. Detective Gumshoe, what are you doing sneaking up on... You took a while. 
I was just worried something might go wrong, so I came too. Fair enough. Crumpled gumshoes ID card in pocket. Hey, don't do that to my card. Well, too late, it's dead. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here, so I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. True that. You really do, do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now, come on, let's see what we can find out. Yes, let's have a looky around. What have we got here? Well, there's a safe over there, so that's probably going to be somewhere to look. Well, let's have a look. Um, 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 uh, what's all this shit over here? These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. On the left shelf. What's this? You went to a theme park. How nice. Irrelevant, but nice. And then, of course, let's have a look at the picture again. This was taken on that day two years ago. The day Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill people. Again. Hmm. Took a picture here. Then went along with Chief Gant to question Dark. Oh yes, he'd be dead not long after. Wait, a few hours later? Is that how long interviews last in this game? And what about the organ? The Chief's organ sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally we hear him playing it. Oh really? This is the 15th. Oh shit. And makes him listen to the organ for hours. No it doesn't. The detective can't hear anything for days except the ringing in his ears. Welcome to Tinnitus. It fucking hurts. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. Oh! Ho-ho! Get wrecked. Nice. Right. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armour and these weapons? No, they're made out of plastic. Yes. How many taxpayer dollars? I didn't know you gave a shit. Plus, I thought you... You'll also get arrested for a tax evasion. Be careful of what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. Oh, really? Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. Well, no. He just stares and stares and stares until you crack. Well, no, it's a door. Hmm. It looks like a code needs to be entered. Well, that's just great. I can't do that. Hello. A seven-digit number. I think I must just might know what it is. Oh. I think I do. What? I don't want to try that. I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Now, if I'm to go and use this, it's because I know for a fact that there is one last ID number that hasn't been mentioned yet, and that's 77777777, whatever. Here we go. We're in. See? Right, what have we got? Bingo! Shit got wrecked the final ID card number on the record that didn't do shit. Ah yes, the executive officer. That ID number? Yes. Chief Gant is the last executive officer. Right, let's have a look inside, see what we can find. If it's anything, then I would assume it's those missing pop pieces. How much does he have stashed away? It's a... It's a... It's a pop piece. It's the piece of the pot. What's this? <gasps> it, it's a piece of leather cloth thingamajiggy. And it has a handprint. No. Uh, I don't think so. It's leather. Is that it? This is all that was used? Well, apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. But well, unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line. Eh, I've got them. 
I can prove this. There's got to be something we can show the detective. Watch this. That piece of the jar is... Wait, wait, wait. This. It's from this. Here we are. All of us put that back together. Oh, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic since it was only fucking yesterday. Indeed it was. That's right, one of the shards had an SL9 instant sticker on it. Hmm. Yes, I mean that one, the one with the handle. It thick it fits! It fucking fits! Ugh. Of course it bloody fits! Ugh. Come on! Here's some glue. Fix this shit. Oh, my sweet Jesus. Here we go. And then, voila. We're done. There you go. It fits like a charm. That, of course, means Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. Hey, guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached, it's different from the others. Well, what's wrong with them? Oh, there's a lot of blood. Oh, I can read that. Plain and simple. And I do not believe that for a fucking moment. That's blood. Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? Because there's something written in blood. Does that not look like blood to you? Oh, well. Right, let's chat. Was that your sister's? Well, duh! That's where I was waiting for Lana, on that day, two years ago. Is anyone using it now? Probably not. This is entirely Chief Gant's office. So he's using it. Preserving the crime scene. Ah. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty pissed at the time. Yes, no one has ever touched touched that desk, it seems. I see. Oh, well. Never mind. Let's chat about Gant. Can I ask you something? I guess. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. You don't think... Nah. You wouldn't be. No. Wait. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Oh, well. Hey, hold on. Not so fast. Well, what the hell's the problem? It's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let it go at that. Well, that just proves that I don't really give a damn. Oh, well. Chief Gant might be a suspect. That's a good idea. Suspect. Huh. Hi there. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings just yet. There he goes, ignoring me again. Oh, sad. So sad. Oh, well. Well, I'm unsure as, as to what I'm meant to do now. I mean, I've got the handprint, I guess. Oh, well. Um... There was a handprint. Maybe I should use the uh, fingerprinting set. Here we go. Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? Yes, please do. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my finger... What? You're an idiot. We're talking about that cloth, for Christ's sake. Gimme that! Sheesh, where's your sense of humour? Right. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Well, I guess. Eh. Oh, yeah, blowing and all that. Great, I wonder if I'll cough up my lung this time. <coughs> Clear my throat first, that might be a good idea. Right, select which finger. Well, let's try the middle. And then! Red the powder like 
the little pixie that I am. Oh, plenty of powder. I'm going to need to buy more, I assume. Right. There we go. Now, make a wish. <sighs> ah, shit. Right, compare. Okay, let's try Gant. He was there at the crime scene. It's not a match. Because I'm assuming this is from the SL... Ma right, it's not a match. Okay. Next. Yeah, no, it was, it was inside the chief safe. Right, along with that shard. No. Wait, I've yet to try every single one. Wait. See? Here's a pa higher power. There's a higher... Oh, you just gotta have faith. Fuck you. Right. Next is Lana Sky. One. Two, three. Four. Okay. But it's not, it's not working. Right. Still nothing. Just skip through that. Thank you. And then it was Emma. Please, it's Emma, isn't it? It's all, it's going to be Emma's. It's a match. I can see it already. Here we go. It's a match. Emma Sky's handprint is on that leather cloth thingamajig. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Well. Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be darks. Nope. What's this? What's going on here? What are the... Uh-oh. This is bad. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Okay, Gumshoe is going to keep this secret. We must never tell her now. Now what? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh well. Um, check the desk. Look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. When it, oh, oh, it's you two. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. Oh, are we going to be sneaking into his um, <coughs> desk now? This looks like a list of evidence used in a case, but which one? The list runs twice as long. Hey, look at the case name. SL9. Ah, I see. It's the SL9 evidence list. Normally they're twice as long. Edgeworth said the exact same thing. A half-size evidence list of evidence. See, Edgeworth said the exact same list. Oh well. Next. I knew it. The chief must be hiding something. Oh really? Well, there's very little that can be done about it now. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Let's have a look at this um, evidence list. Can I read it? Here we go. Ripped in half so only part of it remains. Well... Oh, hello! Maybe I can... Uh... No, I can't rotate it, it seems. Well, I have no idea what this is, but... Oh! Hello? It's a picture. Did you find something? Well, yes, I saw a picture which matches the exact same seat. Emma drew this. Emma drew this. Oh, dear. We're done for. Uh-oh. Gant's here! Oh, Lord. We're done for. We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run into a pole. Just then, I thought of a certain detective. Yes. Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Oh, you in the coat? You're fucking fired. Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. Now! 
Now get out! Great, we just got fucked. We'll be on our way too. Wait! You, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. I'd like a word with you. I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Fuck off. I'm done for. Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The Chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? Oh well. If I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Oh really? Oh well. We're done for. Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try smooth things over with the Chief. Good luck with that. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police want to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Okay. What, 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 what's gonna happen now? Oh, hi there. Yes. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. What? Who it is you're hiding behind those words. Hmm. It seems Edgeworth was right. What? What did he say? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Oh, great. 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 Now. I know who this guy is. It's Gant. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable. Yes, a certain individual is blackmailing you. Oh, yes. No, I think afraid of is more like it. Ta-da! May have persuaded you to silence. Well, is it not obvious? The one I'm supposedly so frightened of? What is this person's name? Damon Gant! Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor, so do not forget your place. Oh well, my apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about the circumstances? I guess. We were partners until two years ago, yes. Yes. <sighs> ah. Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically hiding and forging evidence. Well, no, but... He was in charge. Hmm. I had access because I was second in command, but then, of course, there's always the first in command. Idiot. Eh. You'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence. Oh, I don't know. We've got ourselves, I don't know, a jar and a strip of cloth. Look, here it is. That evidence proves someone is doing something wrong, all right, but it's not the Chief. You what? Now that's scary. But what? Hey, what? Hey! What? I thought I was right! Skip. Skip, please. Right. Let's try the jar. And the strip of cloth didn't count?! Oh my god! Ugh! What even? The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché. It is as you've surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders, even if, even if it means being found guilty for murder. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. Something tells me that this is uh, going to get even deeper. 
Tell me about. Tell me more about orders. I can say that I was given an order that that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Edgeworth's car. Delightful. Just as I suspected. You're nothing but a pawn. My theory is correct. Gant is your paymaster. That doesn't pay you shit. <laughs> you were trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk was broken. I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon. No. It was the knife. I see. I couldn't just leave that knife in him, so I took it out and stabbed him with another one. Even though he was already dead. There you go. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. Oh dear. You dropped the knife. No. <coughs> oh. Touché. Oh well. And then she saw me just as I plunged the knife in. Delightful, I guess. Yes, why did you need to hide Dark's knife? Because it's obviously evidence that would have proven otherwise. Remember, that knife would have been in his safe. If it was in his safe, she couldn't have killed him unless he'd taken it. So, and then why would he take the knife? Oh well. Weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the prosecutors would have a field day. So you wrapped the knife in your muffler and hid it in the muffler. Nice. Then of course you called your sister to tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. Ah. You, you tried to ask your own sister to, for, well, conceal evidence. That's going to send her to prison as um, an accomplice. And she would have probably ended up uh, with 25 to life as well. The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. Oh, really? I see... He was the only other person I could trust, or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. I see. <coughs> Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands and tried to steal the evidence. And of course, he failed. Hmm. Fair enough. Well, sadly, the evidence was already gone. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room, it seems. Intriguing. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, please, tell me more about Gant. Both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Thank you. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Oh, don't worry, I shall do everything in my power to pursue it in court tomorrow. Because why not? Detective Goodman's real murderer. Delightful. And what went down in the Chief's office two years ago? Well, what didn't? And of course, with that done and dusted, it is now time to go and end it here, ladies and gentlemen, for we have run out of time. But don't worry, the next part and the final trial will be brought to you next week and if you can't wait that long then please you can always go to the selection boxes on my left or go to the channel itself there is plenty more to be seen thank you very much once more for watching ladies and gentlemen and of course from me ta-ta